Hello! In this segment, I want to start talking to you about the vocabulary of angles. As we get further into trigonometry, you'll hear me use many of these terms over and over, so you definitely want to be familiar with them. So let's begin. First, let's see some of the objects that you will see and what they're called. I want to talk about a line, line segment, a ray, and an angle. So starting with the first one, a line is basically an object that extends out in two directions forever and ever and goes through two points. And usually the notation we use for this is by marking out the two points that it goes through and by putting a little line segment underneath it with a couple of double arrows. So this guy is a line. In a line segment, we chop it off at A and B so it no longer extends out in both directions. Again, we identify it using those two points, A and B, and we just use a line segment uh, and so we don't put those little arrows on it. In array, it's kind of like the hybrid between the two. So we let it extend out in one direction forever and ever, but on the other one, we stop it. The notation is, again, we identify those two points, and we also put the arrow over it, kind of showing which direction it extends out over. So since mine goes A, B, and keeps going in the B direction forever, I want to make sure that my arrow is also indicating that same thing. Now, probably the most important of these objects is the last one, an angle. That comes from taking two rays and putting them together. The spot that we put them together, right here, is known as the vertex. Now, we'll be studying angles a lot further on, but for now, it's good to recognize that often we mark these out with a, a short arc between the two. And we might even label the angle with, say, a Greek letter like theta, like that. The notation we use for these looks like a little uh, L, but it's actually a little angle piece. And we mark out the three points that it'll go through, in this case, B, A, and C. The middle letter always stands for the location of the vertex. Now with these angles, we commonly measure them in units known as degrees. And it's basically telling us how far we've rotated uh, that second ray. Here's an example where I have one ray and a second ray, so you can see I've formed my angle. And we could measure degrees in either positive degrees or negative degrees. So maybe this one, I've started with this ray, I've made a copy by rotating it. And so maybe this is something like 45 degrees. You can also go the other direction with these angles. And when you go clockwise, then you get a negative degree. So maybe something down here is maybe negative 45. You'll find that there are a few instances where angles will actually be in the same spot. So maybe I'm going in this direction, 180 degrees. Or I could have gotten to that same place by going the other direction, negative 180 degrees. Now, these angles can also be measured in units called radians or grads, and I'll talk about these in future videos. We like to classify angles according to their measure. So if I have an angle that's between 0 and 90 degrees, I call this an acute angle. If the angle is exactly 90 degrees, I call it a right angle. Right angles are usually very special, and so if I have to mark out their little arc, I use a little square rather than a curve. If it's between 90 and 180, this is our obtuse angle. And if it's exactly 180 degrees, I call this a straight angle. Special names are also given to pairs of angles. The first of these pairs is if you take two angles together and you add them and they equal 90, then this is said to be a complementary pair or just complementary angles. If you can take two angles, put them together and get 180 degrees, then they are said to be supplementary or supplementary angles. So these are the basic objects that we'll be dealing with in trigonometry and some of the t terminology that you will definitely see.